So cover the end of your screwdriver so that you take the sharp edge of the screwdriver, pop it in the side so you're going now into the edge of that and pop it out like so. Now if you can't do that easily, what I suggest you do is just leave it there because you're going to disassemble the rest of it and I'll show you how to get another approach at that particular seal. So what we've done is we've taken the base off, that'll allow us to slide the top off. So what we're doing now is, I'll turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to slide the piston and the sleeve out of the body. So there's the piston, and oh look, there's two pink things. These are actually seals. And here is the shaft or the cylinder where the shaft goes down the cylinder. So this is the cylinder itself. So there's a few things we're going to check as we go through now to make sure everything's in place. Now the one thing I will make note of is that underneath here is the seal. So I couldn't get the seal out before. So look, I've got another point of access here, like so, down through there. But I've got to be careful I don't hit anything in there with a sharp item. So what I can do is wrap the screwdriver up again, like so, slide it down there, down the shaft. I've wrapped it up and all I do is push that seal out, out the bottom. So I've, I've wrapped the screwdriver up in rag. I haven't impregnated that, haven't damaged it, so it's all in good repair. But what it does do is expose, now I've got that off. Here's the trick. You can see there's a little dowel there. So that little dowel is actually a locator for this particular cylinder. So that pin or dowel locates this in the appropriate place. Why? What does it matter? Well, if you have a look on the other side of this, that's where the grit comes in. So that pin that I talked about then, the locator, actually puts the portal of this cylinder in the appropriate place for the grit to run through. So if I reassemble this and miss that pin and have this in a different place, I actually don't allow the grit to come through the inlet of that sleeve for the grit to run through into the hardened pipe. So if you don't put that pin in the right place, you'll miss it, grit won't come through and you think, what's wrong now? It's a simple mistake, I've seen a lot of people make it. But as I say, if you fundamentally dismantle something, mark it so that you're aware of the fact that, oh gee, I have to come back and check that mark, what did I mark it for? You realise, of course, it's for the pin. Now, because this is tungsten, I can't go like this to drive that out. And the only time I need to take that out is if I can feel that there is scouring in that cylinder. So the one thing we're going to check is how well that piston slides through there. But we won't do that just yet. We're actually going to take that piston out of that body and then slide it in and out to ensure that it have adequate clearance or significant wear. So we just place that to one side because now what we're looking at is the piston. Now this is the same deal. Whatever you do, don't hit this with a hammer. It'll shatter. What you will find on the bottom of this piston is there's a wear factor. And the wear factor is when the grit comes through, it's coming through on the bottom of this particular piston and into and allowing the grit to come into this hardened pipe going down the pusher line and carrying the grit in the air. Now this is where I was talking about differentiation in pressure. If, as I mentioned before, if you have differentiation in pressure, the pop-up valve's not sealing, your nozzle's worn, far too big, you've got a leak of air on the pusher line, that vortex that I spoke about before can actually occur here as well. So when you pull this apart, if you find that this has got a big groove in it, there's two things. One is, it's a wear factor because the valve might be quite old, but if you'll find that Normal wear is, it's just a slight track across the face of it. A vortex will actually chew the edge out of it. And then when you pull it out and you go, oh look out, the edge of the piston's been chewed away. Start looking then for pop-up valve not sealing, leaks down your pusher line and so forth. Is it common? Look, it can happen. It's not a common thing, but it can happen. And it's purely just an oversight. But with your pre-start checks, of course, 
when you conduct them, you'll pick up things like this. If you don't do your pre-start checks, you'll miss things like leaks and so forth. So the piston itself, in this case, is in quite good repair. Its, it's uh, circumference is good, not damaged. And the face of this, there's no impregnation or wear factors whatsoever. So I'm quite happy with that. Now, without gloves on, I can feel the edge of that piston to make sure that it's, it's nice and clear. No damage, no premature wear. So it's important too, with your thumbnail, slide it back and forth around this piston to see if there's any scouring. Because even though it's hardened, it can still scour and get damaged. In this case, I'm pretty happy it's not. Now these seals here, they seal this body itself so they actually push down on top of that hardened sleeve or cylinder so what we need to do now is remove them the one thing to remember is that you've got two seals here and there's another one underneath this so what they've done with these chevron seals or sergeant seals is that there's two lips to them one seals the outside one seals the inside but look what's different about these fellows they've got an o-ring inside them so the reason they've done that is to keep the lips or the, the chevron spread so that it seals both sides. So we've got one and then there's another one. So why would they have two? This little cylinder here has 100 PSI on a tiny little capillary tube. But on this side of it, you've got a pusher line, which is an inch and a quarter, even larger if you, depending on what type valve you're running but it has a volume of air coming through here. So there's quite a lot more air in this area that this has to cater for. So that's why they put two on there. So one's a backup. So there's two on there. And note the way they're facing. They are facing the pressure. So the two lips facing the pressure, which is in this hardened pipe pusher line arrangement. So there's one more in there. So what do I do? do I, how do I get that out? What should I do? Can I have a gouge at it with a screwdriver? No, I'll damage it. Can I have a flick at it? No, I could scour the piston. So the best thing to do is, we still need to have a look in here. So because we want to have a look inside there, if you're on site, you can actually hang on to this and undo it like so if you don't have a vise, okay? In this case, because I have, have a vise, let's use that. Now be careful when you put this in, you don't hit that and damage it. Because if you damage it, you've actually got to replace it. You can't put a damaged, item back into service so I've just I've lent it up against the stem of the vise and now I can undo these four bolts now what I suggest you do instead of going round like this we've still got spring tension in there so to accommodate the spring tension I suggest you do diagonally okay like so get the tension off them wind them off marginally and then go the other two. Now you can hear the noise that the spring and see, look, the spring's pushing the gasket up off the, the bottom of it. So we go diagonally because remember that this is, this is only cast and I drop things. This is only cast. So because it's only cast aluminium, there is a opportunity to strip the thread or break the aluminium. So you don't wish to do either of those because it just makes your job so much harder. So look, I'm almost out so I can take two of them out, sit them there so I don't get them mixed up or lost, and then slowly undo the other two in a diagonal process so the whole thing's come undone evenly. So look, I can do it by hand now. So just undo those two. Now the gasket that I'm about to expose is Klingerite gasket. So if you find that when you undo this, part of the gasket stays there, just very gently ease the gasket away from the parent metal so that you can try and save the gasket, which will eliminate the need to, to re replace it. But when you get a kit with these, you do get a new gasket. But in this case, I'm looking to see why this valve is not working. So that's the top and you can see there's a keeper in there for that thread. 
okay so that thread runs through there so all this does is push us down on that spring so that now you can see why I said undo that because it takes the tension off, tension off this enormous spring now look at the spring I can't even compress that by hand so it gives you some indication of how significant the ability of pneumatics is look at the, it's huge what I don't want you to do is hit that at any stage with a hammer it's spring steel it would fly off and hit you in the face and, and why would you want to hit it anyway so put that to one side now what we've got is here's the piston inside with a big nut on the main piston underneath so it's a pneumatic piston and the grit control piston down through the bottom of it so all we need to do is push this up through the top and there we expose the piston and we pull that out now remember that seal I spoke about earlier just be gentle with all this because you don't want to damage that that seal I spoke about I couldn't get out before look at this how easy was that so that seal look he faces the other way so that one there that seal is coping with the pressure inside this chamber facing that way and these two will face back down to the significant pressure on the opposite side so the opposing side has more pressure so see how much easier that was and I haven't used something sharp to scratch this housing where the piston runs through be mindful of all that the accidental damage or subsequent damage you cause with screwdrivers and hammers so what we've done now is we've taken the piston out of here we're looking for any sacrificial damage in relation to the piston running up and down inside the cylinder wall on a Thompson valve 2 pressurized pot what can happen when you finish for the day and you turn the compressor off if you don't turn the main air ball valve off to the pot and the pot depressurizes through its own volition that means it's exhausting through the pusher line back through all the valving that grit can consequently end up through the pilot valve, auto air valve, and believe it or not, even end up in here. And then abrasive, air, and rubber all mixed together are quite abrasive and aggressive in relation to the integral wall of this particular cylinder. So what we're checking for now with our fingernail is check around here to see if there's any scouring. Now if I found, this, is one, this one's very good actually, but if I found some scouring in there, what I'd need to do is 600 wet and dry, a little bit of lubricant, like uh, a bit of uh, kerosene, uh, turps even, and by wetting it and rubbing it back and forth, so we're going back and forth and up and down as well, like so, in such a motion, because you don't want to create a hollow spot just by rubbing that scour out. You'll go around and around and around until you've got the edge of that scare out. I'm not saying you'll remove it completely, but as long as you take the sharp edge off, so when this actuation occurs, the piston moving up and down, you don't impregnate or scratch that rubber with the scour that's in there. So what you're doing is creating a bit of longevity. So you don't want to be pulling this apart every couple of months. So that's the cylinder wall. So if I did use wet and dry on that, I'd need to give it a wash and make sure I wipe it out, it's nice and clean ensure that the body for the seal to sit back in is nice and clean and there's no debris left in the sharp edges. So that one's very good, put that to one side.